For over 25 years now, the Ars Electronica Future Lab's artistic work has fascinated people from all over the world, from creative AI to robotics, from immersive 3D environments to dancing drones. But what is the essence of the Ars Electronica Future Lab? What are its big issues of the future? And what will it become in the next 25 years? A conversation with the Ars Electronica Future Lab's Managing Director Horst Hörtner, Director Hideaki Ogawa and Technical Director Roland Haring. Societies, communities that we are, we form our future. By every decision that we make, we, we make future. The Ars Electronica Future Lab's motives vary greatly from virtual worlds to poetic systems, from creative intelligence to art thinking, from robots to swarms and bots. What does the artistic perspective in all of them offer? Why is an artist's view of the future so valuable? You know, there's you know, fantastic disciplines coming up with fantastic innovations, also scientific outcomes, but how to transport the meaning of that to a broader untrained audience is the question. That's the simple reason why you need art in that context is because it can touch you, because it can reach out to everybody from 8 to 88. In traditional science, you try to be as objective as possible, which means you try to reduce or actually delete the, the person of the researcher and the personal view of the researcher completely and uh, try to cre create a very abstract meaning of things. And with art, it's exactly the other way around. It's only about the personal subjective view of uh, one person looking at um, a phenomenon in our world. And uh, this is a, a quality that needs to be preserved and also can create a lot of meaning, which is otherwise lost. Science can create the scientific questions, but art can shift the question to social questions. And I think uh, art has a very interesting elements as art as catalyst and art as a compass, you know, to give us the directions and many possibilities. And also art as journalism, you know, to convey the social kind of concerns and also points to the public. So. I think that is a very powerful uh, role and uh, uh, so force uh, of art. You have worked with people from all over the world and from completely different backgrounds, from artists to coders to participants in business programs. What have you learned from this experience and what does this diversity mean for the Future Lab's work? The more holistic your perspective goes, then every input from every different discipline is making totally sense and is enriching uh, so much. And that's true for disciplines, but that is even probably more true for cultures. And the trick on that is to ask the questions that are somehow outside mm. of disciplines. This is where the soil for innovation is born. This is, mm. you know, everything that you can contribute can resonate in the other's discipline or in the other person <laughs> or in simply you know you know on a very subjective level also generate reactions the diversity to make errors or misunderstanding is uh, because of this you know uh, uh, encounters with different backgrounds and different disciplines and very very often this is very true what you say by misunderstanding in these creative collisions yeah totally new things pop up, um, which no, no one of the participants yeah. would have expected um, arriving at the table. I think so. I like the creative collision metaphor because creative collision is uh, not talking about the compromising, you know, between A and B uh, or cross, cross area, but rather, uh, you know, observing the phenomenons happened after this crash. So this is, uh, I think, a hint of innovation, it's not just uh, finding the common sense, but uh, through these creative collisions, we are quite often finding, oh, yeah, this is quite interesting. A few days ago, Horst wrote the email uh, asking for my opinion, and I was replying, interesting. <laughs> and 
he asked <laughs> Austrian or Japanese interesting. So actually having this multicultural communication adds additional notions also to the words and terms that you are using. And um, simply, I think it enriches also the way you're thinking. Yeah. But uh, seriously, we are lucky here because uh, we can encounter with totally different types of people from industries of artists, creators, entrepreneurs, and scientists, researchers uh, here in our Technica, together with uh, such creative ecosystems. Uh, we can really every time learn, you know? So that's also very important because we are not just staying, we needed to learn from them, not we are, you know, just listening, we are exchanging, collaborating through the idea of the, you know, um, uh, interactions. So we are lucky. In what ways has the Future Lab evolved over the years? And what will the Future Lab look and feel like in 25 years? What do you want it to become? With the experience of the past 25 years, we have now found um, a model how to run the Future Lab in a um, yeah, sustainable uh, way. And um, on the one hand, this is very good because this, this gives uh, also stability to uh, the Future Lab as an institution. But on the other hand, we also, I think, need to be careful not to continue to follow the model just because it works. And I think that is the most dangerous moment. If something is very successful, then naturally humans would stick towards that, you know, yeah. rhythm. But that's totally wrong if you think about um, inspiration and yeah. flexibility. Maybe we can envision over generation innovation. So because in my life, what I can achieve is maybe A, but uh, next generation is doing B, then afterwards C, you know? But uh, the a vision and the dream or something can be more longer. So my research life, you know, or topic-wise, the life it might be two, three years or five years. But can we have such kind of long period kind of project over <laughs> decades, you know? We never thought about it. Let's look into the future of society. What can we expect in the next 25 years? Are there any technologies on the horizon that may transform our everyday life? One phenomenon that we see is that the speed of technological uh, and sociological change is accelerating. So um, I think probably this is even an exponential function. This will have a lot of uh, implications also for individual people or, or persons in the 20, next 25 years. And um, I think one of the most uh, obvious things would be that more or less your physical body will become more and more uh, attachment of your digital identities. I think the expected crisis that we are running into on climate change, um, the already existing crisis of migration flow, the already existing crisis of principally you name it, um, we will need to learn to produce and innovate technologies that are part of solving challenges and not constantly being part of making challenges, creating challenges. And I think we should allow ourselves as a society to now think about those technologies that we would need in a few years from now when the disaster has happened. And how do you think can this be accomplished? How can the Ars Electronica Future Lab help with these questions? I think we have to understand, and this is also what the Future Lab actually is contributing uh, or tries to contribute to, is the understanding about the, the way we form as the individuals uh, and the societies, communities that we are, we form our future. By every decision that we make, we, we make future. And that's constantly. The accumulation of the individual decisions 
is what we earn. So that is, it's just not really f fundamentally understood enough that there is no alternative to the change.